QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Unearned Revenue Monthly Invoicing. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file we set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of QuickBooks desktop so we can focus in on the new unearned revenue feature. Under the view dropdown, we have the hide icon bar selected and the open windows list selected. Open windows open on the left hand side and the company dropdown, we've got the home page open as well. Going to the reports dropdown as we do every time company and financial looking at that balance sheet standard the balance sheet standard is going to be customized for the date range change 010127 tab 123127 tab let's go to those fonts those numbers and change them bringing it up to 14 for a little bit more visibility is that okay yes all right then let's do it Going to the reports drop down again, this time company and financial for the profit and loss, otherwise known as the P&L. We're going to then change the range, 010127. Let's go this time out to, let's go the all, let's go to, I think we're going to 103127. Let's do that. I think that'll be far enough because I want to see this one on a month by month breakout because we've been running our scenarios on a month by month. The current scenario was in June and then we'll do some of the payments uh, going forward. So it'll be a few months out as I see it now. So we're going to we'll just customize this fonts and numbers. Let's bring it on up to 14 as well. So it matches the balance sheet. We need matching reports. You can't be uneven. You can't have it all crazy unevenness. So there we have it. Let's go back to the home page and recall what we did last time. We've been thinking about the new unearned revenue feature for a subscription type business with this type scenario, that being a magazine type of business or a newspaper or more likely these days, some online software business where we get paid upfront for like an annual service. In our case, we just did five months out because that's we don't wanna take too much of our time here in the example problem to get the concept. So what we did last time is we had an estimate and then we had the sales order. So the sales order and the estimate aren't gonna be recording anything from a financial statement perspective. The estimate being an estimate of like a job or whether we wanna take the subscription, the sales order basically finalizing that. We didn't have to go up to the vendor side because we're not gonna be buying any inventory, but we want to get paid upfront in our case for five months of a service like a, like an application we're gonna be providing if it was software. So we skipped over to the receive payment. Now, normally when we enter a receive payment and would be the case under the old method, under the negative receivable method, this would then create a negative receivable because we don't have an invoice to tie it out to. But under the new method, we basically tied out the receive payment to the sales order which is strange from a financial reporting purpose because the sales order doesn't record anything to the financial statements, but it's a nice tool internally to then uh, record the received payment. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us, but, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. 
If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Not to a negative receivable, but rather to a positive liability. Now we did that for five months of, 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 uh, of our service. That's going to be whatever our subscription is software, let's say. And then each month that passes, we can now create the invoice. The invoice now recording the revenue as we earn it, as time passes, and reducing the liability of the um, of the unearned revenue. That's the classic journal entry. Notice the other thing that that we kind of want to see, however, is this information on the back end in the subledgers, which we usually see in the subledger related to the accounts receivable, which is a, a reason I think that uh, QuickBooks uses a journal entry, which will be an added thing. So let's go to the balance sheet and check it out here. Just so we can see what's going on. Here's the AR. If I go to the reports to see the report related to the AR, customers and receivable, let's go to that customer balance detail report and let's customize it so it's a little bit larger, a little bit larger if we could. Fonts and numbers, let's bring it up to 12. 14 is a little too big for this one. Let's go on up to 12. Now notice this new one isn't here yet. Uh, because we didn't do anything for the receivable side. Instead, we created the new liability account, which is down here under the liabilities, unearned revenue. So there's going to be a separate report now related to unearned revenue for a liability, even though it's a customer, which is usually tied out to an asset of accounts receivable. So if I go to the customers and receivable and I look at the open prepayments by customer we can customize that report we can bring it up to 12 let's say okay 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 so there it is the whole amount is in there as of this point in time two sub ledgers a little bit more complicated but on the plus side properly being reported as a liability as opposed to an asset if i go into the company drop down and we go in or customers drop down and we go into the customer center where our customers hang out. We see that here we're working on this five unearned revenue. And recalled from last time, everything looks pretty much the same as the old method from an internal bookkeeping standpoint. And the internal bookkeeping, if you used a negative receivable, was quite fine, right? Because you can facilitate the transactions quite clearly in here. Here's the estimate. Then we have the sales order and now the payment. The only difference is when I go into this payment here, it's a fancy payment because payment usually means it's decreasing the accounts receivable, but it's not here because it says prepayment, which means it's going to be doing something to the unearned revenue being tied not to an invoice, but a sales order. So that's a little bit tricky, but if that's your business model, because all of your stuff is subscription based then you know that'll become fairly clear you might not even use the other payment format uh in any case so if i go to this other one this negative ar same kind of concept we have we have the estimate we have the sales order and then the payment but this payment was a normal payment without that added little tag which meant that it made a negative receivable instead of a positive liability but from an internal perspective it looks pretty much the same and so if i go up top the next thing that's going to happen is we want to make the invoices as time passes. So a month has passed. We've done whatever we're supposed to do. Subscription model. Let's go into the sales order. And the beauty of breaking out our sales order for five separate months is that now we can create invoices from it. So let's create an invoice. But I want to create the invoice for selected items, not the entire thing. So I'm going to go to this one and say, OK. And then I'm just going to say one month has passed. And so let's just do that first month has passed, boom. And so there it is, let's tab it out. This is gonna go into 080127, let's say. And so one month has now passed for the invoice. What is this going to do? It's an invoice. So you would think it would increase uh, the accounts receivable. And then the other side, uh, the other side is gonna go to uh, income for the third for the 35 increase accounts receivable 3771 uh 35 going to income and then the 271 going to the payable but remember that we had that unearned revenue there as well so it's so the invoice we would like to actually decrease the the unearned revenue 
but the invoice is usually tied to the accounts receivable. So you see the problem with these subledgers. So QuickBooks is going to create like another clearing account to facilitate this transaction. So let's see it over here. If I say now we're going to create the invoice, uh, what would typically happen? Normally what happens is accounts receivable goes up. But this is kind of the weird one right here because because now you would think it's not because now we have it in a liability account. So you would think that the unearned revenue here could be going down uh, by that amount, right? So that's where, but but we're still going to say accounts receivable is going to go up because it's, we're going to do another journal entry to kind of compensate uh, for it. So this is what's actually happening. So we're going to say the accounts receivable is going to go up and then we're going to have the sales is going to go up. The sales is going to go up because we said it was, I think equals 175 divided by five months and I'll make that negative. So for that amount, and then we have the sales tax payable, which we're gonna imagine we have to deal with just to make things more complicated, which was at 0 0.0775. So this equals this times 0 0.0775. And then the receivable would be this. Let's say negative sum of that, right? So 71, uh, 71. So, so if I record that, now the accounts receivable is going to go up by that 3771. Income is going to go up by the 35, and that liability of sales tax is going up. Now, but but note that what this shouldn't really be going up to accounts receivable. What should be happening instead is it should be going to unearned revenue, bringing unearned revenue down. But the invoice form usually goes to accounts receivable, right? So what's going to happen is we're going to end up with another journal entry to do that. Instead of just fixing it right here, we're going to do another journal entry that's going to be saying, okay, let's take the unearned revenue down and then accounts receivable is going to go back down so that we can, and then we'll be able to see it in the sub ledger as well for the accounts receivable. So now we're going to say, okay, accounts receivable is going up by that. Uh, I'm sorry, accounts receivable uh, uh, unearned revenue and then accounts receivable. So if I record this, now accounts receivable is going to go back down. Uh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> sorry. And it's going to go back down. And then unearned revenue is going to go down on the credit side, leaving us with the five months that are still uh, needed. So if I, so then. So note, even looking at that, I've kind of added another journal entry so that I can get my sub ledgers to work. And then QuickBooks actually adds another, another basically clearing account and doing this journal entry. So that's where you get a little bit more messiness happening over here. So let's record it and see what happens. So I'm going to say, uh, save it and close it. Is that right? Do I have everything right? Yeah, let's do it. This customer has available credits. Now I should have applied this out already, but I'm going to say, okay, yes, apply out the credit. So here's the credit credits available prepayments. So it's a similar process as if I had a negative receivable, uh, but now I've got these three boxes. So I'm going to apply out the prepayments, 73, 71 of the total 188, because that's the amount of the invoice. Let's say done. And then, okay, I think that's good. Hopefully that's good. And if I go back into the invoice, we can see now that the payment has been applied out. That payment isn't changing the journal entry. It's just an information information so that I can give this to the client if we needed to. The journal entry would still be affected by that 37 on the accounts receivable or decreasing unearned revenue. There's going to be a journal entry increase the sales 35 and this 271. Now, if you wanted to apply that out before you record it, I think you could still have gone to apply credits up top. We'll test that out again next time for the next month. Let's go ahead and close it and check it out. If I go to the balance sheet and let's see what's what's happening, what's happening over in balance area. We're going to say then there's the invoice for the 3771. See, even though it's down to zero here, it's still up going for the 3771. The invoice increase in the accounts receivable, even though it's not like decreasing the liability of unearned revenue. It's going to happen basically with a journal entry over there. So then the other side is going to go to the profit and loss, the P and the L. So profit and loss in 
August, there's the 35 just for the revenue side. And then back to the balance sheet, we also have then uh, the, the liability of the sales tax. So let's do the sales tax. Do, 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 do. Where is, there it is. I see it. I, I see it. Don't, you don't have to point it out to me. I can find it myself. So there it is. And then if we go into the unearned revenue, here's the unearned revenue. What happened there? Because it went down. If I go into it and then I'm going to say, okay. So I adjusted the date up top to bring it back. Uh, and so there's the journal entry. Now notice what it did here. It put the journal entry in as of the day that QuickBooks thinks it is right now because, uh, uh, because we're working in the future. So that's why the date is messed up. But I, look, let's look at it conceptually right now. We're gonna say, okay, uh, what it did is it, it then took the amount out of the unearned revenue with a journal entry and if I go into that journal entry, I could change the date. Let's actually do that. I'm going to say, let's change the date here to make it, uh, what was it? 07, uh, 07, let's just say 1527, let's say. And then, and then I'm going to say, okay, record it. You can't edit the journal entry as it's linked to a prepayment. Okay, whatever. I'm going to close this. Okay, I don't want to do it. Restore it then, if you're going to be like that. Okay, so then, in any case, uh, the other side we went to was this, this account for prepayment transfer, which is a clearing account. So now you've got kind of another clearing account that's in the middle here. So I'm going to close that out. And then, and then if I go back on up to the accounts receivable up top, accounts receivable, we're going to say then let's bring this back to 26 just so to make sure i see the whole thing here and wow there's a lot going on in 26. let's try filtering it i'm going to customize the report filters and i'm going to filter by type uh transaction type so we'll go down here and say we want to filter by there it is transaction type and then by journal i want to see the journal okay so there we have our journal and again it put it in there on uh 12 15 but there's the tra transaction the 37 71 and it's trying to put that in the date that it thinks it is at this point in time and so so there we have that and the other side once again if i go in there is going to uh it's going to be going to that clearing account i believe so if i go into the journal entry so accounts receivable account for prepay payment transfer so i'm going to close this back out close this back out close this back out so we see that there if i look at my customer balance detail to I can see now there's there's my customer. So see, I can see why they would want to do that to, to use the accounts receivable, which would be this added step right here, right? Which would be putting the invoice into accounts receivable instead of going to unearned revenue and then doing this transaction right here so that you can see it going in and out of accounts receivable so that you have the sub ledger record here. Notice what you don't see uh, in here as you did with a negative receivable. With a negative receivable, it's actually easier to see because now you have the payment, which is negative, and then the invoice is applied out to show the, the amount of the invoice that has not yet still been applied out. So, so even though this is wrong that it's a negative receivable, it's actually kind of easier to see than up here uh, and then up here, right? That's that's kind of one of the problems with these with the subledgers. And if I go into the subledger for the open prepayments, you can see now here's where you have the detail, right? So on the unearned revenue, there's the the 188.56, and then it went down by that 37.71. We do have this issue with the date, which probably wouldn't be an issue if you were working in real time but i can see that could cause you problems if you can't change that date 
if you're going back and trying to fix something or something like that because it's locked in. So let's do, an, let's, and if I go internally, if I go into my customer center, internally it looks pretty straightforward because now we still have the estimate to the sales order uh, to th and then the payment and then the invoice being applied out looks great. But then again, we have these two journal entries down here. And and again, I would think maybe the reason they, they wanted two journal entries and a clearing account is that you can see them both down here. So in other words, why do they need a clearing account instead of just doing this, right? They, they added another journal entry in there, which you wouldn't need from a debit and credit standpoint. I think it has something to do, of course, with the sub ledgers and to be able to track this information out internally so you can see those two journal entries net out. It's bothersome to look at. It looks less clean than uh, over, over here, this method, where you don't have those journal entries. We have these three payments that were tied out, but it's not too bad because they, they knit out against each other. Also, if I go to my lists drop down and I go into my chart of accounts and I look at my include inactive accounts, here's that clearing account that they set up, the account for prepayment transfer. So if I go into that, there you have uh, the transfers. And again, the thing is, the thing that's kind of annoying is it's not allowing me when it makes that journal entry to change to change the date, right? That date is being tied into the current date that the transaction's happening rather than the date uh, the date that we made the invoice, <laughs> which seems kind of weird to me. I would think that would be a kind of an issue. I would I don't think that's exact, but that's how it is right now. So that's so they might change. I would think they might change that because I think that feel like that's something's wrong with that. But in any case, if I go back to usually we would be working in real time, right? So that's how it would be. So let's go back to the customer center and we could do this again. So let's imagine another month passes and we go back into the sales order and we're like, okay, now let's make another invoice just for the, for the selected items. The second one, so boom, 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 just that one, okay. And so this is gonna happen on 09. Uh, 20901, whatever, 27. So, and so what's, so this is going to do the same thing. So if I look at the journal entry, we're just going to do the same thing again. This is the second invoice. Invoice, let's say this was month one, month one, and month, and this is going to be month invoice in voice voice month two and so then once we'd have the same journal entry accounts receivable for the same amount 3771 income sales tax same thing same o same o 35 and i'm going to say we'll just say this is the same thing, negative sum of that. And then, so if I record that bit, then we've got the accounts receivable going up, which is the controversial thing here because really the unearned revenue should be going down from just a debits and credit standpoint, but we'll add another journal entry to fix that. And then income is going up for the next month that has passed. And then sales tax, the liability is gonna go up. And then we're gonna add another journal entry to fix the fact that the accounts receivable, it should have decreased unearned revenue. So I'm gonna say unearned revenue is gonna be debited. And then the A to the R is gonna be credited. So that allows it to go in and out of the sub ledger for accounts receivable for the 71, 37, 71, 37, 75, double clicking the unearned rev and picking up that. So now I've got five, I think we had five months, four, three months left in there. And then accounts receivable goes back down. Accounts receivable going up and down makes sense because then you would be able to see it going in and out on the sub ledger at that time. Although again, they add another account over here when they do it. So we're gonna, so what's this gonna do? That, that'll increase the, the accounts receivable, 3771. The other side's gonna go to income, 35 and then sales tax for the amount of 901. Then it's gonna make that journal entry 
to decrease the unearned, to decrease the liability and the other side going to accounts receivable, which you would think would be happening on 9-1, but it seems to be doing that not at the date of the invoice, but at the date of the current day it thinks it is, which is kind of the, an issue. Let's save it and close it and check it out. So the customer has available credits. Uh, credit, would you like to apply those credits? I'm gonna say yes again. So I'm gonna apply the credit out here. So we're gonna apply the credit. So so there it is. Is there anything I can change with the date? Date 9127. So so here's the date 73. So we're applying out that 37 prepayment. Okay, I'm gonna just say okay. Once you apply the available prepayment, this you won't be able to will create a journal entry for this transaction. Do not display this page. I'm going to say okay. So now if I go in there, I'm going to say invoice. It applied out the prepayment and it says it's uh, so it says it's paid. That looks good. And we could have applied it out by saying apply prepayment. I don't see any way to uh, change the date of the journal entry as we do the transaction though. That's kind of an issue uh, or it could be if you're not working in real time or if you need to go back and do something. If, we're, if you're working in real time, that isn't gonna be an issue, but I would think they would tie the journal entry date to the date of the invoice, not the current date that the software thinks it's at. I would, I'm thinking they might pick up on that at some point and fix that because I would think that would be the case unless I'm missing something. But this would work if you're doing it in real time. It wouldn't be an issue if we weren't working a practice problem in the future. So in any case, if I go back on over here and I go into the A to the R, we see the invoice going up 3771. We see the other side going to the P and the L, the profit and the loss. So now it's September, there's the 35. That looks good. The other side, the sales tax going into the liability account, sales tax payable, sales tax payable. That looks properly done. And then we have the liability account going down, this added journal entry to do the liability account going down. So where's that of my unearned revenue? You did not earn that revenue. You did not earn that revenue. But see, the dates are messed up here, see, which is annoying. I'm a little frustrated by that. So then they're going, but it's going down now. You can see the process. And again, if we were in real time, it's picking up the current date. Uh, and, and, and it won't let me change it to uh, what, what would it be? I would think this would should be happening as of the invoice date which I said was what, 090127? 090127, see it's doing all this stuff down here. Save it and close it. You can't do it, you can't do it. So annoying, annoying. So I think I feel like they should adjust the date to the journal entry date, uh, but maybe maybe they'll uh, they'll pick up on that or maybe i'm maybe i'm missing something uh, so but in any case the transaction makes sense and then it's going to go up top to then the accounts receivable if i go to the ar and and so it the other side would be in here if i brought the date back and and then that looks good and then if i go into my customer balance detail report we can see it going in and out to the receivable that's the point of this added journal entry in my estimation so you can see it going in and out of accounts receivable and not just cutting accounts receivable out entirely so it's in the detail report but if you go to the customer uh the the, the customer where's the balance detail the, the customer center where's the other report the customers receivable customer prepayment report. Now you see the detail here, the start, and it's decreasing by those two, leaving it here. If I hit go to my customer balance detail, we see no, the customer center. So now we can see this one. And again, it gets quite 
convoluted with all these journal entries because you're going to get two journal entries every time an invoice happens. Let's do one more just to fin just to round it out to what we did in the last problem. Sales order one more time. I didn't hear no bell. I only stop doing stuff when I hear a bell because that means food is happening usually. We're going to create an invoice, create an invoice for selected items, and then we'll uncheck those one more month. And then <clears throat> this, I think I'm on, uh, what, what were we on? What month were we on? Does anybody know? Uh, October. October invoice uh, 100127. And so this is going to do the same thing. Let's run the journal entry over here. Do it fast because people are getting bored. Invoice month three. I don't know why we even have to do this one. After what you need to do another one, we have to make it match. We have to make it match what we did in the other problem. So I'll just copy these down. And so this is going to be the AR same journal entry. Boom, 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 boom. Same thing. And then accounts receivable is going to go up on the A to the R. The income, double clicking on it, it's going to go up. And then the sales tax, it's going to go up. And then we've got this stuff is in the AR. We're going to take it out of the AR. So now it went in and out of the AR so we can see it in the sub ledger. And then the unearned revenue is going down. Boom. So I think that's right. I think we did that right. Let's see. That's what should happen over here. So it should increase the accounts receivable by 3771 because it's an invoice. Other side should go to the income and then we should have sales tax payable 271, but it shouldn't have gone to AR. It should have gone to decrease the liability. So it's going to make another journal entry, taking it out of the liability account and netting it out against the AR, but give us a weird date. Let's all oh, before I forget, let's apply the credit out this way. Uh, the changes to this transaction. So I'll, I'm going to save the changes there. I can apply it out that way. So there it is. And there's no way I can change the date to stop with this weird thing. Do that with the journal entry. I don't see how to do it. And then, yeah, it won't let me do that. Muy interessante. Okay, let's go ahead and save it and close it and check it out if we if we could. Go into the balance sheet one more time. We're going to say that the A to the R has the 3771 again. The other side going to the P, the L, the income statement for October. There's the 35 there. Then back to the balance sheet, back to the basics and the balance sheet. We're going down to the sales tax payable, sales tax payable right there. Double clicking on it. It's been impacted and then we know there's a decrease to the liability account. The liability account, unearned revenue down to the 75. Is that what I have here? 7542. It is indeed what I have. But they, they did the crazy date thing because it's doing the journal entries as of that date. There's the journal entry. It's also taking it in and out of the clearing account. And the other side would go to the AR on the balance sheet which we won't check out because, again, it's going to be hidden in the prior uh, year. And then the sub ledger for my customer balance detail, we can see it going in and out with the journal entry and then the invoices. Again, the journal entries having the date uh, issue, which I think should be tied to the invoice date as far as I can tell. And then, but we at least see the detail conceptually. That looks good from that standpoint. Open prepayments. We can see the activity here and the detail in here, which looks good, although the journal entry is not exactly specific. And again, the dates are kind of an issue, but we're working in the future. So that is what it is. Customer center over here looks everything looks pretty clear for all the stuff that makes that we're concentrating in on from a bookkeeping standpoint, except that we have all these other journal entries that are going to going to cloud things up in here. So that's kind of annoying. But from a bookkeeping standpoint, we would be saying 
I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna ignore the journal entries because that's just the weird bookkeeping stuff or weird QuickBooks stuff. And I'm just gonna focus on this. And, and that stuff is following as it should, right? So if I compare this process to this process with the negative AR, looks very similar in the forms that we're actually dealing with, although the negative AR doesn't have all those journal entries, doesn't have two subledgers when you're looking at the balance sheet for the subledgers, doesn't have a clearing account, doesn't have this extra journal entry in and of itself right here, and it doesn't have the added clearing account that QuickBooks is putting in to do that, and it doesn't, and it doesn't show those transactions down here, which all add some room for problems to happen. So again, it works pretty good. There's no way to eliminate all those added little intricacies uh, so that that I can see. So that's those are the, some of the pros and cons. And remember, if I go back to uh, the 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 chart of the accounts lists chart of the accounts, it's going in and out of this account, which you can only see if it was in uh, include active sale so it made it inactive quickbooks did so that you don't see the detail of it going uh in and out of here but but there but there it is and so it put them all in as of 12 15 because that's what quickbooks is seeing as the current date so those are kind of the pros and cons on if we're looking at it from the uh, subscription model side of things. So we've kind of went over it in terms of a deposit type of format, pros and cons between the two methods and with the subscription.